Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite tree residue and some of the things found in it. So, let's jump right in. Amber is fossilized tree resin and has evidently been valued to humans for at least the last 13,000 years. Aside from just being a pretty stone fitted into rings and necklaces, it is of great interest to paleontologists for its remarkable ability to preserve arthropods, plants, small vertebrates, and other organisms. It has also been showcased in books and movies such as Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park, where researchers were able to take blood from preserved Mesozoic mosquitoes and use that to create dinosaurs. Over the years, a number of different researchers have actually tried to glean DNA samples from amber millions of years old, containing organisms including termites, bacteria, and various plants. In reality, this is pretty much impossible because the DNA contained within the fossils would have long broken down, which is why all actual paleogenomic samples are from the last few tens of thousands of years. But how does amber form in the first place? Plants produce resin to protect themselves or in response to injury. High heat and pressure turns the resin first into copal, and once all the contained organic molecules are released, the copal becomes amber. Organisms get trapped and die in the resin, and their bodies are thus preserved for us to wonder about today. Because amber protects its fossil contents from many decaying forces, including erosion, the fossils are often preserved in exquisite detail, allowing researchers to see various anatomical features that would not normally be present in fossils. The most famous amber fossils are clearly the arthropods. The oldest of these date to Triassic strata of Italy some 230 million years ago and contain plant-feeding mites, as indicated by the 2013 paper, Plant-Feeding Mite Diversity in Triassic Amber. Also with regard to mites, mites of the family Myobidae have been found in amber along with mammal hairs dating to the Eocene. The hairs were identified as belonging to a member of the family Amphilimuridae, a clade of small insectivores sister to hedgehogs. This indicates that the Eulopatyphla specific parasitism of those mites was already present 40 million years ago. Of course, other arthropods have been found in amber, such as ants. We mentioned in wasp evolution the predicted wasp ant Sphecomirma from the Cretaceous, which was found in amber. This is just one member of the basal ant subfamily Sphecomirmanae, which is thought to be either sister or paraphyletic to all other ants. The 2008 paper, New Fossil Ants in French Cretaceous Amber, demonstrates that Suikomirmene was fairly diverse, having members from Hadomirmex from Burmese Amber and Suikomirmides from France. Ants of the subfamilies Formicinae and Panerinae have also been found in Cretaceous Amber, indicating that these clades diverged from Suikomirmene by at least the Middle Cretaceous. As was mentioned in wasp evolution, bees have similarly been found in Cretaceous amber, such as Melitosphex. Concerning Lepidopterans, the first butterfly in amber was described in 2004. Named Voltinia dromba, this species dates to the Oligomyosine epochs and was discovered in the Dominican Republic. This butterfly is a member of the family Riodinidae, and some members of this family are known to have intimate associations with ants, a symbiotic relationship called Myrmecophyli. In this relationship, the caterpillars are protected by the ants from predators, and in return, the caterpillars produce honeydew from the plants they eat. However, because the caterpillars don't eat the phloem sap, they must be stimulated to produce honeydew by the ants' antenna. This symbiosis is at least 15 million years old, as Myrmecophilus butterflies, such as Theope, are known from amber of that age. A green lacewing that mimics liverworts in appearance, named Philochrysa, was found in Myanmar amber dated to 100 million years old. The 2006 paper comparing amber fossil assemblages across the Cenozoic looked at numerous amber spider fossils and concluded that larger arboreal web-spinning spiders tend to be found in habitats where tree needle density and branching complexity are higher. Staying within the arachnid class, a fascinating spider relative called Chimarachne yingi was described in 2017. The genus name is quite fitting, since it possesses a mixture of both derived traits, such as silk glands, spinnerets, and male pedipalps modified for sperm transfer, which are unique to spiders, 
and ancestral arachnid traits, such as a segmented abdomen, bearing a long whip-like telson at the end, which no modern spider has. These and other features make Chimarachne a transitional form, more closely related to spiders than any other non-spider that is still around. However, it is far from a close relative to the direct ancestors of spiders, because Chimarachne was found in Burmese amber, dating back to the Cretaceous 100 million years ago, while spiders originated in the Carboniferous more than 300 million years ago. This suggests that there was a clade of spider-like arachnids with tails, which began close to the origin of true spiders and continued to live alongside them for over 200 million years. Cockroaches have been found in Miocene amber, and even crabs have been reported in amber, the first having been described in 2009. And there are very many other examples of arthropods preserved in amber, but for the sake of time, we need to move on. Outside of the arthropods, velvet worms have been found in Eocene amber with features linking them to the much earlier Cambrian lobopodians like Ischia. Nematodes have also been found in Cretaceous amber, ensnared by, of all things, carnivorous fungi. Interestingly, this same niche is found today in over 200 species of zygomycota fungi. Moving on, the remains of tetrapods, such as hair and feathers, have been found in amber. For example, amber has been instrumental in preserving predicted transitional stages of feather evolution, documented by the 2008 paper, The Early Evolution of Feathers, Fossil Evidence from Cretaceous Amber of France, and the 2016 paper, A Feathered Dinosaur Tail with Primitive Plumage Trapped in Mid-Cretaceous Amber. That latter paper describes a portion of a Coelurosaur tail that was trapped in amber. Part of one in Antiornithine was also found trapped in late Cretaceous amber, and various other dinosaur and bird feathers have been found in amber, detailed by the 2011 paper, A Diverse Assemblage of Late Cretaceous Dinosaur and Bird Feathers from Canadian Amber. Finally, as there are modern ticks that parasitize birds, there were Mesozoic ticks parasitizing feathered dinosaurs, documented by the 2017 paper, ticks parasitized feathered dinosaurs as revealed by Cretaceous amber assemblages. Outside of the animals, plants, fungi, and protists have been found in amber. For example, the common lichen Parmelia has been found in mid-Cenozoic amber. Various Cenozoic angiosperms have been described, such as Hymenaea protera and Strychnos electri, both from Dominican amber. A member of the carnivorous genus Roradula has been found in amber between 35 and 47 million years old, which fits nicely with the date estimation of its divergence from the non-carnivorous family Actinidiacea. Ligianthus revoluta, preserved in Myanmar amber from the mid-Cretaceous, was described as a perfect flower, shedding a new light on the early evolution of pentapetalae and eudicots in general, narrowing the gap between fossil record and molecular clock estimates. Together with contemporary fossil finds, Ligianthus suggests that eudicots underwent an evolutionary radiation during the transition from the early to late Cretaceous. Finally, some protists have been positively identified in amber, such as Paleolychmania proteris, but the 2016 paper, Microbe-like Inclusions in Tree Resins and Implications for the Fossil Record of Protists in Amber, warns that many of the alleged protists in amber are actually artifacts of the original plant material. And there you have it. Animals, fungi, plants, and protists have been found in amber. Their amber fossils give us both a record of their evolutionary history and their biogeography. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.